the government of Bhutan to deliver his weapon of peace. <coughs> On this very important assignment, which is a part and parcel to the climate summit for our living Himalayas, I, on behalf of the Minister of Agriculture and Forest and other stakeholders, would like to extend a very warm welcome your Royal Highness and esteemed chief guests for the occasion. Your Royal Highness's presence is indeed a great source of inspiration to all of us here and to all the stakeholders who will henceforth be involved in the various interventions that the climate summit and other side event pursues. I would also like to extend a very warm welcome to our Minister of Agriculture and Forest, who has been the architect of the climate summit and the various side, intervent, side events intervention. Dr. Andrew Shield, the United General of the Synod, is a person known for his artistic values, leadership, and the wisdom for the countries and people living in the Himalayas region. His participation and the commitment of the Synod to be an active co-organizer for the various side events and summit is highly appreciated and timely. We are also honored to have various senior officers, district guests from various countries, and above all, the youth from the neighboring countries of Bangladesh, India, Nepal, and Bhutan. A very warm welcome. By now, by now, I'm sure that most of the youth participants here are aware of what Earth Observation is all about. It deals with satellites that are large, large space, with the main purpose is to provide light from space from both the spatial and general dimension. The information captured from such Earth observation, meteorological prediction, and climate change scenarios. <coughs> Today's event, which is focused on practical aspects to the emerging concept of climate smart agriculture, where into awareness of crop, livestock, and forest production systems in an environmentally friendly manner. The Earth observation made a more sustainable world through a better understanding of our world, especially an understanding of the climate change and its trends. In the globalized world, the youth are considered the most important agents for change, since the youth are the integral part of the towards our goal of sustainability. In a sense, the message is that the youth are an investment for a better future. To conclude, I would like to read to a young dedicated to the youth. The event also suggests the need to include such interventions in our school curriculum and training programs. It also reminds us of climate change scenarios and to enable the advocacy of informed scientific findings. And finally, this event brings into retrospect that the youth are the ambassadors of our future. And since information is power, we need to empower the youth with necessary information and tools. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandu, for your warm words of welcome and sharing and highlighting the potential role of the youths. Now it's my great pleasure now to request Dr. Andrew Shree, Director General of East Mode, to welcome on behalf of East Mode. Your Royal Highness, Hashim Ifema, John Wangchuk, Yunfo, I'd like to thank the Royal Government of Bhutan very much for ISIMO having the possibility to be present here and to organize this side event. And of course, I'm particularly pleased that we have the chance to organize a youth forum. Uh, I think this is a very important component for the summit which has been organized with such effort 
and diligence by the royal government. Yesterday, I had made a phone call to Bumta, and I was asking a friend there, what is the weather in Bumta? And he told me, oh, there are some clouds. But it, then he told me, but the satellite image is actually promising nice weather. Very surprising. So he was actually referring to a very important remote sensing and GS instrument. But then he told me, Aha, but there are some clouds crowding in from Tibet. They might create some bad weather and snow. That was the second surprising observation he made. Because in, September, in November, having clouds coming from Tibet is quite unusual. And what does it mean? It's probably a symbol or an element of climate change. So, these two examples, I think, represent a good example why we think remote sensing and GIS instruments are very important in relation with climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, we are celebrating today also the GIS Day. And I think it's important to highlight the importance of the instruments which are made available by GIS in general, but also by specific instruments. I think they are providing us overviews and help us to design and show very complicated situations in a simple way, in an impressive way. But in a situation where we are in the Himikush Himalaya, with high mountains and difficult accessibility, I think these instruments provide us also an overview and access to information where we couldn't get access, where we couldn't have time to make field investigation. So I think it's a very important uh, first approach to the difficulties, but also to solutions. And I think GS instruments and remote sensing is a strong instrument for dissemination of information. So I'm very happy that we can celebrate this day together with the representatives of the youth. And I think it is very important that we take this opportunity. Now, why with you? We think that JS is so quickly developing, creating a lot of new technologies, and we have to be aware how we apply them, how we can use them practically. And the idea to work with you and to see what these instruments can bring and how you can work with them, I think is a great idea and I hope that you will benefit from it to understand better our environment, but also that among your friends and when you go home, 